You are listening to Women in Music and Arts, and I'm your, your host, Sandy Castell, and we are on KLAB 1230, live from Las Vegas. My guests today are Amy Frost and June Murray. June, um, you got in, you were an artist when you were a young child. How did you get inspired to go into teaching? Mm. Uh, you know, I really uh, enjoy this opportunity to share a little bit about my background. Mm -hmm. uh, I was one of those uh, self-starter, independent knuckleheads. I <laughs> thought I had to do everything my way, and it was usually the hard way. I'm so blessed it finally occurred to me that maybe somebody else might have some knowledge they could share with me and that I might listen and learn. And so finally, I decided to start trying to do things in a little bit slightly more traditional way. I'm still a knucklehead, but at any rate, <laughs> um, I um, started out in college in 1961, but dropped out because I was very involved with the Civil Rights Movement. I've never stopped being involved with the Civil Rights Movement. And uh, got married, had two children, got divorced, moved from Boston to New York City, um, raised my kids there. And everyone was telling me, you need to go back to school, you need to go back to school. And you know, like I said, I was a knucklehead. No, I can do it on my own. I'm smart, I don't need a school, I don't need a degree, I don't need all that. Finally, I did decide, hmm, maybe I will just go on ahead. And once I went back to school, I mean, I became like an addict. I was just loving <laughs> in, being in school. I stayed in school, graduated with a 4.4 grad uh, uh, GPA, went on to Columbia University to do my MSW went on to the University of uh, California, Santa Cruz, got another master's in wow. psychology, and then went on up to Berkeley and did my PhD in ethnic study, uh, which is wonderful. And um, by the time I finished my uh, doctorate, I you know, had been working as a clinical social worker, and I was offered a position at North Carolina State University in Raleigh. And I thought at first I could continue working at the hospital I was working because I loved the work I was doing, but, you know, again, knucklehead, right? <laughs> so, you know, I finally got convinced that really I didn't get a Ph.D. to continue working, you know, where I was. So mm -hmm. I went on into the university and stayed there ever since and, be, you know, went on to not just be a faculty member but a chair of the social work department. My last position was chair of the gerontology department at uh, Morgan State University, which is part of the University of Maryland. Wow. My writing career started uh, when I was a child. I used to write poetry. Um, I met Maya Angelou when I was a young adult in New York City. She uh, encouraged me to join with her the Harlem Literary Guild. Mm. But at that time, there was Maya Angelou, Sonia Sanchez, Nikki Giovanni. I never shared oh anything I wrote. <laughs> Not one word. I wasn't crazy. You know, like, how, you, how am I, a little June, going to come up there with you? So, but, you know, I kept writing, and she right. encouraged, She was one of the people who encouraged me to go back to school. Good. Yeah, a great mentor. So, uh, but right, what I'm writing now, and I'm almost finished with, is the story of my adoption, which is extremely unusual yeah. and very interesting. Mm -hmm. And I've I've told people about it, and everyone always says, "You need to write that girl, write that, write it." So that's what I'm doing. So this is going to be an inspirational book, absolutely, to people out there. Yes, that, I hope so. That either you know have have challenges or or don't feel that they're um, as as important as the next person, right. right? To encourage them to to go ahead and follow your passion, mm -hmm. go back to school, mm -hmm. even you know if you didn't do it when you were young, right. and, and go ahead and, and achieve what it is that you want to do. And then give back later on mm -hmm. in the community because you do that also. Yes, I do, yeah. especially through my sorority Alpha right. Kappa Alpha, shameless. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, that's what you're here for, uh, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, that's great, June, I really appreciate it. June. I have something here that you wrote, and I'd like to read it. Is that all right with you? Thank you. Okay. When we think about cultural diversity, we usually think of ethnicity. Oh, I know, I can't even say that word. Ethnicity. Blacks, Native Americans, Hispanics, Asians, and Caucasians. But cultural diversity also reflects age, language, national origin, religion, sexual orientation, and gender. I think it will be very exciting as a member of WEMA to identify, develop, and promote talented female artists that reflect all of these aspects of diversity, including age, for example, young girls who love to paint in watercolors, adolescent girls who love to write short stories, adult women who love to create sculpture or write poetry, elders who piece together fabulous quilts that tell their life story, women who have artistic skills rooted in Ireland, the Caribbean, Mexico, Korea, Africa, the Deep South, or Appalachia. Harlem, USA, or in the folklore of our native people, the rituals of Judaism, Ju Judaism in Israel, or from within the folds of a Palestinian veil. 
wow, <laughs> that beautiful. is amazing. Beautiful. Thank you. So she really needs to be in Weeman, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, you. So tell us a little bit about that. I think so much about the unsung heroes, the artists that are in our community, right, sometimes in plain view, but that we might not think of as artists, per se. And I mention a few examples. Uh, little girls who might like to paint with watercolors, or adolescent girls who are beginning to write poetry. Yeah. Um, older women who are learning to sculpt or use other forms of art. Seniors, our elders, who are making beautiful quilts that tell the stories of their life. And um, I think that those are artists that we need to think about and promote and to, to highlight mm -hmm. and to share in our community. And that's diversity, that's cultural diversity. I agree, I agree. And um, we, have, we have women of all ages in our group. Mm -hmm. We have college students. And uh, we have an 85-year-old woman that is a comedy writer, mm -hmm. and she's great. She's fabulous, and she worked with a, com a lot of different comedy programs as she was growing up. Um, and, and like you said, the seniors, we can learn so much from the people who have already been there and done that. You know, I also mention a few, if I may. Okay. Uh, for instance, uh, I could see us being connected with Vicki Richardson, who has a gallery left of center. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Andy Lee, a very, very ta talented painter who used to make her home in Las Vegas, comes back and forth, had a gallery here as well. Of course, we already mentioned Quinn Rivers, who is a very talented poet. Yes. And then Brenda Dumas, who makes beautiful fused glass, as well as, you know, handcrafted greeting cards. Right. And, I mean, she's in the school system. You know, she's teaching over at Rainbow Dream Academy uplifting children, teaching them to be, uh, you know, really aware of art around them. Mm -hmm. I think it's everywhere, including the subways in New York City. Right. And, and you mentioned uh, quite a variety of different talents and skills, and, and that's one thing that WEMA tries to do. We have showcases for our artists, we have songwriters events, we have a tribute to the ladies of jazz. We're going to have our first uh, private invitation only art showing, artisan show, at uh, Sandra Marnell's on June the 24th. It is by invitation only. However, if you'd like to be invited, you can uh, contact me at sandy at wema-womeninmusicandarts.com. Um, I wanted to ask June, what is it that if you had to really wrap up everything that it is that you would like to tell someone about what it is that you're passionate about, what would that be? Well, I've always been a helper, as Amy was talking about, um, and I, you know, eventually went ahead and got the perfect uh, education and training to be a clinical therapist to help people and families and groups. So I'm very passionate about that, and I don't see any reason why art and music couldn't be all forms of art couldn't be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And so I've tried to incorporate that as much as possible. So that's what I'm passionate about. 